geographers. We are going to make a map now. That's what uh, but my plan is, and this will incorporate projection slash coordinate systems, but it also will build on things that we have already been doing. There's a, there's a plan here to make sure that you are solid geography GIS people. Okay, so first thing in Arc GIS, let's do a new map. And we will call this one just forest. Okay, that sounds that's simple enough. Let's do that. We'll say okay. And as I've done before, I think I did in one of the previous weeks, I uh, simply did this initially to create that workspace within my projects folder so that I have a place to put some things that I'm going to download and unzip and, and all of that. Okay, so for now, we're going to just leave this as is and go ahead and go into Canvas to start with. I'm already here, but just it's, you know, from the home thing when you first come in, go to Files, go to Data, and you will see, and by the time you're watching this, maybe there's more stuff, maybe not, I don't know. Um, but you should see world underscore bank dot gdb dot zip. And so to download this, these three dots, click on that, hit download, which I've already done, just to not have to wait on internet speeds and all of that. And that'll automatically go to your downloads folder. You know, if you're using Chrome and, and all this stuff is, is matching like mine, but we'll, I'll just assume your stuff is, is in your downloads folder. So we'll, we'll download that, we'll leave that there. The other thing I want you to do, I have it in this tab, is I want you to visit the World Bank's data uh, repository, whatever they call it here. And I'm bringing this up just because it's another good resource to have. Right? And it's simply data.worldbank, all one word, dot org. And I have for the assignment for this week, I have the link in there. So you can find it. But it's, it's just data.worldbank.org. And the World Bank, it's a big entity um, that, that they basically loan money to countries. And so in the same way that you would get a loan to buy a car or a house or whatever, the World Bank does the big stuff. I need to build, you know, multiple water treatment facilities or fix, you know, this infrastructure, you know, whatever. That's that's what they do. All right. And in such as they just like how a you know bank wants to know what kind of person you are, some background to see if you'll pay the stuff back. And well they also they kind of keep track of the world. To make sure that countries will, you know, be able to pay them back. That's that's the idea. That's a very apolitical idea right there. So because of this, they have all sorts of data and they provide a bunch of this to us. So I want to show you how to work with it. So from here, we are going to browse by indicator, not country, but indicator. And this first one, we just we're just going this way because it's right here, this forest area in square kilometers. This is what we're going to use. You can, and you can browse through. There's a bunch of different stuff in here, okay? They, a whole host of things all kind of works the same way to access the data, download it, and all of that. But we're just going to do this one. I think it'll work well for what I'm trying to accomplish this week. So I'm going to left-click on forest area. And it brings up all, you know, all sorts of informational charts and, and things like that. What I want to do, though, because I am a professional and I know what I'm doing, I don't need this stuff. I mean, I could turn on a map like this. Oh, okay, first off, Mercator projection, no good um, at all uh, um, for what we're doing here. But but this is, um, this is okay. This is why we're going to deal with it. Instead of going in here... And letting this website do the stuff, we are going to get the raw data and learn how to do this on our own and therefore have more control over it. All right, so where it says download on the right, 
we're going to select CSV. Okay? It stands for Comma Separated Values. It's a table, it's a spreadsheet, like, like Excel, which we have over here. Similar concept, but this one is way simpler in terms of the formatting and the actual the components of the file itself. And when we're doing GIS and we're working with tables, we always want simple. And we're going to spend a week, I don't know, maybe two weeks from now, we'll get into um, uh, tables, uh, working with tables, maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks. I don't, I don't remember the schedule. I'll get into this in more depth. But for now, just know we're going to download the CSV uh, file right there. And so it starts that process, and it's this whole thing, API underscore ag dot LND, I guess land dot, blah, blah, blah. okay, so that's, that's it. And that should also, hopefully, be in my downloads folder. Okay, but these are the two things I need to make the map that, well, that you need to make the map that I want you to make. So we'll go to show folder. Let me bring it over here to this screen. So I've got my two. This one should also be, yeah, zipped as well. Let me open this up a little more right there so we can see it. All right, so both of these I need to unzip. Uh, and I want to just go ahead and put in that projects, uh, what do they call it, forest, right, in that folder. And so rather than walk you through, I mean, I'm going to do it so you can see what I'm doing, but with this week and in future weeks, what I'm going to do, and we've already talked about this stuff, I've gone over unzipping and the whole, you know, using 7-zip, this show more options. I've done this before, so I'm not going to just go through and, and uh, you know, walk you through slowly through everything. I'm going to assume you know how to do it because you've done it. If you don't, if there's something like this that you know we've done before, I kind of go through it and you can't quite keep up or you're confused, I'm going to encourage you, go back, revisit previous videos that I've, I've shown uh, how to do this stuff with so that you can go through, see how we did it there, try to translate it to what we're doing here. If you're absolutely stuck, sure. You can send me an email, we can, we can talk about it, but for your own success in this class, future classes actually working with it, don't just try to get the answer right away. Make sure you can do it. You have the skills to do this stuff. Okay? And that's the, that's the approach that we should be going for. All right, now I'm going to extract, as I said, I should hide this just so you can't see it. Um, yeah, we'll go this way, but I want to save it in that, that folder that I made. There it is. Beautiful. And I want to have everything in there. Okay, so that one seems to have worked. Same thing here. Again, on my other screen. So just work through that, unzip everything. And then once you've done it, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just go in here. We'll look at it, make sure it actually exists. Magnifique, we have our world underscore bank.gdb. You, I'm sure, remember that means it's a file geodatabase, so we're not going to really look at it. In here, we'll look at it through ArcGIS itself, right? But then I also have these three, actual, not just one, but three CSV, comma-separated values files. So we have this first one that has just that long coded name, and then we have metadata number one and metadata number two. Effectively, metadata, I'm sure you remember, means data about data. I'm not going to worry about that right now because I know what I'm doing here. I'm going to walk you through it here, but this is absolutely, if you go to some place, you've downloaded the stuff and it comes with something like that, take a look at it. See what's in there. 
if there's any valuable information and, and especially see if there's something that's going to tell you, hey, you don't want to use this for what you're trying to do because of this limitation or whatever. All right. Okay. So we'll ignore these for now, but I want you to open up this one and you can just, you should be able to simply double click, I would assume, and it will open up in Excel. But it's not technically an Excel file. There's a different extension, but Excel should be able to read it. If it doesn't work, if you double click and it, it's freaking out, you could be able to right click, go to open with, you can open it up in Excel. Technically, you can do it in WordPad and Notepad and some of these other things. If you don't have Excel on your computer, uh, as a student, you should have access to that. In fact, that's a reminder. I should put a little link um, for how you can, through the, the school, you can actually download Microsoft Office. Um, so there are ways to, you know, get this and, and read it. So if you don't have Excel yet, hit pause, look for in the, the week's material, I should have some link about that, about getting Microsoft Office. If you uh, don't see it, shoot me an email because I probably forgot um, to do that after I finish this video, but, but get Excel. And do it not just for this, but you should have Excel and Word, these, these Microsoft Office programs. If you have free access to them, get them. Because so many agencies and companies I've worked for used Microsoft-based stuff. And not knowing it puts you at a disadvantage when you're actually, you know, working or trying to get a job. And Excel can do some fantastic stuff. I mean, so can Google's, whatever, Sheets. Awful name. Um, but Google Sheets can do similar things. I mean, there are other programs out there, but a good working knowledge of Excel, it's a, a valuable resource for GIS people. Okay, all right, and I've, and I've said, so double click on it. If you have Excel or open with and select Excel. Let's see, how is this over here? Let me bring this this way. Open this guy up, so you'll see a whole host of things in here. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but again, it's because we got this simple CSV valued uh, um, file here. This is great. We need to do some stuff to be able to work with it, but this is great, okay? So number one, when we're dealing with tables in Excel, we can't have this stuff up at the top. So what you need to do is left click up here next to the number one, and drag, I'm still clicking and holding, drag down to number four, so I highlight all of this stuff. I'm going to right click, I'm going to hit delete. So that gets rid of that and shifts everything up. And that's good. So now, this first row running across, this is what I call my header row. This has the actual title of these different columns, right, the fields in there. So this first one, country, name, it's not, that's not data. It's not an actual country name, right? It's telling you everything underneath here, it's a country name, okay? So that's when we're dealing with these tables in, in uh, GIS, we need to have the header row be the absolute first row, okay? That's, that's thing number one. Uh, I'm gonna expand some of this stuff. So we have country name, country code, we can leave that. This whole indicator thing, Got indicator name, forest area, square kilometers. That's useful. This indicator code, look, I don't, I don't want that. Uh, that's just, that's not gonna help me at all with what I'm gonna do. So I left click on D up here to highlight that entire column. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hit delete. Just to get rid of it. It's not helpful at all. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take country code, I'm gonna hit delete. Just cause I know I'm not gonna use that too. All right, so I just have country name, an indicator name, but so far so good. Then this 1960 is in fact the year and 61 and 1962 and so on. And you can see it's empty, right? It isn't until 1990 where clearly the World Bank started keeping track of these data, right? So all this is, is blank and therefore useless. So I'm also going to left click and I'll just scroll across and I can stop here. Just right click and hit delete. Okay, and it shifts it over and I'll start over and I'll come this way to get rid of this empty stuff. Again, just so it's not confusing or hard to read, I'm trying to keep this simple and easy 
to use. Another thing, you can highlight this. Don't hit delete on your keyboard because that'll just keep, it'll just get rid of like the, the years in here, but it won't do the whole thing where it all disappears and shifts over. So you'll have this big gap. So always, when you want to get rid of the entire thing, select it, right click, hit delete this way. So we get that. All right, so now it's looking better. I'm going to hit save because I did some stuff. But here's the other issue that we've got going on. Okay? ArcGIS, when you bring a table like this in, it doesn't like headers that have numbers or start with numbers. Right, they can have numbers. We don't want to start with numbers. So like this 1990, it's not going to like. What I could do is I just slowly double click. I get my cursor in there. What I could also do is if I click on this stuff, I can type up here and change stuff. Right? But what I always do, this is just what I did. Put a Y in front of it for year 1991. All right, I can do year... 1990, if I want to, all right, however I want to do it. Um, that way, the program's happy, it works, I can still look at it, I know what it is. All these other numbers are going to be fine, okay, and I can still have the numbers in here, it just needs to start with a letter. It's stupid, but it's it's what it is. Um, and this is, it's a skill to be able to work with these types of tables and bring this stuff in. That's why I'm introducing it now, but we're going to have another week where we, we play with this and see some other tricks with it and, and go a little further. All right, now look, it's gonna be tedious to go through all the way up to the year 2020, the last year we have data form. So we're not gonna, um, we're not gonna do that. Instead, you know what, I tell you what, since this is just a, an exercise, I mean, it would be cool to keep all of the data, make a handful of maps, see forest change from 1990 to the year, you know, 2020. We could have a bunch of different maps, pick like decades, um, you know, 1990 and then 2000 and 2010 and 2020. And we could have four maps and see the changes that take place. You could totally, you could do that. But we're not going to do that. Um, so what you can really do, let's just go ahead. Let's just scroll over here and let's just leave 20. In fact, you know what? Actually, I'll take this back just in case 2020 is garbage. I don't know if you've, you've heard. There was this pandemic that happened. Um, it screwed some stuff up. Let's, I'm, I'm left clicking, holding, dragging. Let's keep, I'm going to keep 2018, 2019, and 2020 just to have some options in here. All right. Then I'll put that Y in there. Let's fix that. This is simpler, easier to read, and, and I'll be able to use it. Okay, so I'll hit save, make sure it actually works. And then what you want to do is once you've done all this stuff, go ahead and close the thing, get out of it. And that's just, it's just useful. Sometimes Excel puts on a little lock file. So then you try to bring the thing into ArcGIS and you can't do it and you're getting errors. And it's just because it's open in Excel itself. Um, so close it when you're done. Okay, so we've got all this stuff. Now let's go back oops, to Arc GIS Pro. And let's go ahead in our catalog. Yeah, let's see, Arc. Um, let's see, folders, forest. We've got all this stuff that is in here. It's updated if it doesn't show up or whatever. You can right click on any of these things, hit refresh. And these things should pop up. But so I've got my table I messed with. Okay, let me see. Can I, yeah, I can left click and drag that. Okay, the other way would be to go up and do the add data thing. It would work either way. So I bring it in. Now nothing happens on the map screen, right? Because it's a table. There's no actual shape, no, no actual, you know, geometry to it, at least not at this point. There are ways to make it display, but right off the bat, it's going to come over. You're not going to see anything, but you can see here, it has a stand alone tables. There's our table. So we know it exists. And what we can also do, if we right click on that, let's hit open. And it should show us if this works. Oh, beautiful. 
So yeah, there are headers like we saw, but they're highlighted or you know bold in here, so it's really clear. Right? That's why we needed to get rid of those first four rows and have all this clean. That makes the program happy. You can see our little Y that we put in there, and we have values. What happens, like if we didn't have this Y in there, what typically happens is you'll bring stuff in, it seems okay, but in these uh, fields where you know there should be stuff, it'll be brackets and it'll say null in there, effectively saying like, I got nothing. Um, that can happen, or you just try to bring it in and it gives you an error right off the bat. So what I always do, when I bring a table in, I right click, open, I make sure I see stuff I, I think I should be see. Right? I don't have these numbers memorized, but I just, the fact that I see numbers here, that's a good sign. Okay, so we're good there. So I'll close this. And then our World Bank thing, I have two things. I have this lat long carto. So bring that in. That's just the latitude and longitude lines, although a simpler version of what I think I gave you before. So I guess we're going to be dealing with this global extent. And then we have World Bank countries. And now we've looked at countries before, like with that South America map, but this one is, I, I tweaked it. I made it, I basically went in, did some of the tedious hard work um, so that this would work, so that you don't get overwhelmed and it doesn't become this nightmare. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to uncheck. In fact, I'm just going to right-click and remove the base maps. I'm going to hit save. So I have the lat long, the countries, and the table in here. Okay. Now, a um, few things. Number one, the whole projection thing, we got to deal with that. Like I've been talking about, look how squat Greenland is. This is another thing. When you look like the United States, you've got Maine and New England just kind of drooping. That's not good. Alaska looks kind of squished. No good. We want this to be an attractive final product. So that's, you know, no other reason we want to deal with a projected coordinate system to make it look nice. Okay? Um, but we're also going to do, we're going to make sure we, we pick a specific one. And I'll get into that when we get into that. But first, before we get into making this pretty and actually useful, we need to get our forest data onto the map. Right? We need to connect it in some way. And what we're going to do is what's called a join. All right, now let me go up here to our World Bank countries. I'm going to right click and open the attribute table. Okay, and so in here, I've got, I don't know why that one's blank. Interesting, maybe islands out in the Pacific or, or something that aren't even, uh, you know, labeled um, at all. Um, but in here, I've got just, it's just the countries themselves. And I've gone in and I've, I've messed with the names themselves. Because what we need in order for this to work is that this name field here needs to match whatever name field we have here. So in our table, it's called country name. In this, it's just called name. Okay. Um, but what we need is like Afghanistan. Okay, it's just simple Afghanistan right here. And I need to find, yeah, right here at the top, Afghanistan. It needs to be spelled the same. It needs to have that capital A and then everything else lowercase. You don't want abbreviations. Um, you know, you don't want uh, um, some of these. Let me see if there's an example at the top. But some things are, it's like the Republic of whatever, right? Or the something, something, something of whatever. It needs to be that same, same spelling. Let's see. Okay, so like right here, okay? Congo, or Republic of Congo, and then the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Those are the names, but the World Bank, and they do, it's terrible. It's very annoying with what they do, but they, they have really poor data management practices uh, in here. So for them, like the Democratic Republic of the Congo, big guy in the middle of uh, Africa there, um, they, they in their table, what we downloaded, it should be, in fact, let me, let's go ahead and do it, shall we? There you go, Congo, comma, D-E-M, period, space, R-E-P, period. So I went in, 
and I made sure that these matched in here so that this join would work. That's something you will have to learn to do. We might play around with it in here. You definitely see this in an intermediate or advanced GIS class. It's a hassle. It's what I did. I had to go through and see what wasn't working and match stuff up. I took care of this so that it will be easy for us with this first little adventure. Okay, but that's the idea. We're going to join it based on the name. And so therefore, what it's going to do is it's going to match from our table to the shapes on here. If it sees something with the exact same name, it's going to tack on the data here. So I'll not only have the shape and, and you know, know where the country is, but I'll have these the forest cover you know, based on the years right there. All right? That's the, that's the idea. That's what we're going to do. That's what this, this join process is. So let me go ahead, just because we don't need to stare at this. Close that. I'm going to right-click where it says World Bank Countries. Okay? And I'm always doing it. Click out of that to make sure. This is clear. I am always starting a join from the thing that's drawn on the map first. Okay? I don't start at the new table. I start at the thing that already exists in space. That's a key step and something students always forget or, or screw up or whatever. And it's not going to work if you go the other way. Okay? So I'm going to the thing that is drawn on the map to start with. I right click here. And I have joins and relates. We'll talk about the difference later when we start talking about this stuff. But I'm going to simply add join. Okay, so it brings this up. And so in here, it's thinking, there we go. Okay, so it knows, like, you know, I only have one standalone table in here. So it throws this in here. If I had more, it would give me stuff. It also will allow you to take the attribute table from other things or whatever. We're just, this is what we want. And yes, we want to join it for our World Bank Countries feature class. So now input join field is going to be name. All right, and then country name, it kind of guesses based on the type of the field and all that. It's not always right. So you want to double check that, but it's correct this time. Name from this World Bank Countries, and that's going to match to country name in our table. Now, it gives this little yellow exclamation guy, and it's saying this thing about it's, you know, it's not indexed, and it's going to performance, and blah, blah, blah. don't worry about it in here. For what we're doing, we're not, we're not concerned in the least uh, about this stuff. Um, you know, and you can, you can go in and click the index, and you can do all sorts of stuff, but... We're just going to do this. You could do the validate join thing. I always view that as the coward's way out. I just do it. I just feel, let's do it and see if it works. So I'm going to hit OK. It's doing stuff. Whoa! And things went away. Yeah! Did it work? I don't know. It's, it's always done this. For, good Lord, I've been working with some version of this software for like 20 years now. They've never done a thing where it has like a thumbs up. It goes like, your join is cool or whatever, or gives you a window to check it. I mean, I guess I could validate and just kind of make sure. Um, but still, I want to, if it happens, I want to see what happens. It doesn't do that. But what I can do, in fact, let's use our little VRC right here. If I just left click my little finger pointer guy on the Democratic Republic of the Congo, I click on that, and it'll bring up the attribute table, like the entry for this specific entity, for this specific country, right? And so what it did is it gave me the name and the capital that's from the existing thing, but I know it works because I've got now country name, got a value. I have forest areas, square kilometers, got a value, got the years, value, right? That's, that means it worked. If it said, if it had all of this, but then again, it said null. No, no, no. It means it didn't work. I screwed something up. Something didn't actually happen. Okay? And this also, just looking at this, uh, this is depressing, but this is reality. Uh, but looking at it, you can see 2018, we have more, right? If I, you know, kind of looking at, it looks like it's 1, 1.28 million, effectively, um, square kilometers. I think it's tiny. I think that's where my commas should be. Yeah. 
um, 1.28 well, round uh, million square kilometers in 2019. It's 1.27. All right, 2021.26. We can see we're losing forest uh, in a place like this. This is why we would want to study it. Forests are important. A lot of incredible creatures and, and just species in general exist in this part of the world, let alone climate change issues and the whole carbon sink idea and all this stuff. We want to know what's going on and we want to see where stuff is disappearing. All right, so we can start to see how this, these data can be useful. And I would have no access to this. No way to make a map this way if I didn't find it at the World Bank, download it, join it, you know, and, and make what we're going to make. Okay, so you can click around. Okay, we can do Brazil, same kind of deal. We got the Amazon over here. You physical geographers out there, you get this, right? You know, the whole intertropical convergence zone stuff and why we got the rainforest along the equator. You, you get that. The, the rest of you, you know, criminal justice majors or whatever. See what you're missing out? Huh? You do, you know, playing with, with monkeys and, and stuff. That's what we do. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can click around and you can see what's going on. U.S., it, it's all working. Okay, now there are some places, like Antarctica, if I click on this, it's going to say no. And I knew that was going to happen because there's not a value. First off, this is all covered in ice. Forest cover isn't something you're actually doing a lot of down here. So it doesn't exist their database so it gets that no there's no way around that okay but the important thing is for the most part all of these countries appear to be be good um oh there's one just to show when i was playing around with this so it's french guiana here but it's technically it's part of france this isn't the best i would if i were really doing this i'd, I'd really drill down get to the bottom of what's going on but that's just one weird one I had to do something to kind of make it match, but it's also connecting to France. It's not, it's not ideal, but that's one issue. And sometimes that happens, right? Or you just have a case where you don't have data in general. We do the best we can. All right, but this is good. So let me close this first off, and I'm going to hit save. So I just accomplished something. And it's a thing too, like this exists in this way in this map. If I opened up this country's feature class in another uh, map, in another place, another location, say I close all this, I'm coming back weeks later, and I start messing around with it, that join isn't going to be there, right? Unless I open up this specific project, my forest project, right? This actual file. So keep that in mind. I haven't, I haven't changed the data at all. I'm just linking them together, okay? And again, we'll, we'll get into this in more detail when we get into it. All right, so there's that. So now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make a map and what we're going to do. Step one, I want you to do is right click on World Bank Countries and hit Copy, okay? And then come up to where it says Map, and right click and Paste. Aha, all right. And so what I'm gonna do, in fact, proper technique. Let me right click on Map. Go to properties, and I'm going to give it the name. We're going to call it, uh, in fact, we're going to call, let's call it global forest, all right, because that's what I'm going to try to show. And this way, if I went back in and I wanted to make some inset maps or stuff, which I think we'll be messing around with next week, I get in that habit of actually naming this stuff. It's going to make life easier. All right, I'm going to hit save because that's what I do. All right, so this is good. Now, I also want to do where it says this bottom one, so I don't get confused, I can left click slowly, and it will highlight, right? and I can change stuff, or I can right click, go to properties, same kind of deal, but I'm going to go all the way over here, get rid of that, and I'm going to put no data, okay, and I'm going to leave it as this yellow color for now. Okay, but I did this, and you'll see why, I guess, when we get to that point. Okay, but I'm doing this, I'm setting this up ahead of time, just in case some stuff doesn't work with what I'm going to do, so I don't have gaps in the, um, in the map itself. Okay, so the rest of this will save. This World Bank Countries, I'm going to do right-click, go to Symbology, 
Okay, and right now everything is just this yellowish color. In this, where it says primary symbology, so this first little tab on the left, I'm going to select where it says single symbol, click that, and it brings this drop down here. And I, I'm gonna, you know, you can look through and see what's in here. We'll mess with some of these. Some of these I never use because I don't like them, but we'll definitely want to know this graduated colors option here, okay? So with this, ho oh, oh, ho, look at that, look at what happened. Number one, oh, that's that's harsh red and yellow and orange. Um, and number two, it, it changed things, right? We have these different, different colors for different countries, and so that's what we mean by this whole graduated colors. And the, the graduation, it means it's an increasing or decreasing in some way, and typically, the rule of thumb is the darker the color, the more of something is being depicted, is being mapped. Right? It doesn't always work this way, but it, it, our human eye tends to, you know, work this way. We pick up the darker colors and, and we see more in this way. And it can be a little confusing. This one is the yellow to orange to red. Let's do this just real quick. This color scheme, man, I'm going to hurt my eyes. If I hit the drop down here, I've got options, all these preloaded options in here, all right? Um, now, because it's forest cover, I'm probably going to want to do something green, just because it makes sense. This one has this blue-green thing. This one has the all-greens. You can see there's slightly different things, five distinct classes, three, you know, the continuous stuff. If we just hit that, you get the general idea, all right? It's showing where it's darker. It would indicate more, lighter would indicate less, okay? Um, here's the other thing, though. This might, you might think like, oh, interesting. I, I wouldn't think that forest would, would work this way. Um, like Saudi Arabia, you wouldn't think they'd have more forest than some other places in, in Northern Europe. Well, you'd be right if you were confused by that because that's not what's going on. The field here, it says shape underscore length. It's talking about like the length of the, I, I guess, the, um, like the perimeter of the country itself would be my guess uh, in here where the link's actually connected to. This isn't what we want, nor area uh, in here at all, because that's just talking about the shape of the country. What we want are one of these year values. So I'll just do 2020. If I click that, there we go. Get some stuff changing, and so ho ho, look at this Antarctica. Remember, we didn't have data for it. This is where this no data thing comes in handy because if I uncheck this, oh, I want my mouse to screw up, it just vanishes, and it's because it, it doesn't fit into these classifications that are here, right? So it doesn't fit here, it can't draw anything, so it just disappears. If we have this here, we at least still see Antarctica. And this is also useful in cases where sometimes we have data where we're just missing stuff from certain countries for whatever reason. And it's not because of like the joining issue, it's just we don't have data for this year, for this country, because they were in a state of civil war, or there was some, you know, some issue at play, right? So that, this just is just a nice kind of placeholder for this. And we can keep that underneath and still see what's going on in the world. Okay. Another thing we have, though, is that the way this is set up, okay, and this whole natural breaks, I'm not going to get into this here, the method, well, here, let me go through your field, that comes from the attribute table. Normalization, we're not going to talk about now. It's a way to adjust your field and the data in there and have it make some more sense. I think we'll get to that in some future week. Method, if I hit the drop down, it gives us some options here as to the ways in which we can take all of these different data values and lump them together in meaningful ways. And this is nice. It actually gives you a description. The old software did not do this. I don't think it had any of this in there. You had to you know, look it up and, and learn it uh, initially. But this is kind of nice. You can get and see what's, what's happening uh, in here. Typically, this natural breaks is phenomenal when it comes to geographic to spatial data. Okay? And it looks for natural breaks in the data, and it's this whole statistical thing, but that's 
That's the idea. So often, if you don't have you know, a set reason, say, to do you know, quantile, equal integral, these different possibilities here, you can stick with natural breaks, and you're going to get a good math. Okay? But then other times, you can't. It's also, it's a kind of a warning. Again, we're not going to dwell on it. Take the statistics class. Take some kind of quantitative, you know, spatial analysis in GIS or something where you're really getting into the data, and you'll discuss this, but it's a case where if I do this natural breaks map here for this data set, and let's say I do something else, like it's forest cover here, and then like, you know, I don't know, something else. Uh, in fact, this is a case where, oh, oh here's, here's a better example. Um, these different years that I have, right? 2018, 2019, 2020. I might want to make three maps on the same sheet, that same layout that show this stuff. But if I use natural breaks, that division is going to be different because it's dependent on the data itself, if that makes sense. So what I might want to do if I'm doing a comparative thing is do like some, you know, one of these other things, a defined interval, um, you know, you, you'll go through, you'll learn what the best thing is. Read the, the descriptions in here. Um, and, and yeah, you'll, again, don't worry about it. The main thing is I want you playing with coordinate systems and projections, so don't dwell on this too much. What I am going to do, though, if I hit manual interval in here, it doesn't really change anything. But what I'm going to do for this first one where it's white is I'm just going to hit zero and then enter. Okay, and what that did, it didn't really do much, but it just made sure there's nothing in here that's that's zero okay so that's a good sign but i want to make sure when i'm looking at say my legend of this stuff that i don't look at it and just well a i don't want to just have white everywhere because it means that it looks like there's really nothing uh in there maybe right so i can i can tweak that and i could change some of these if i really wanted to i'm not going to um but i could if i wanted to all right you can, again, play around with this stuff. You can play with these different things, you know, with the colors themselves, see if it looks any different um, as you go through. But but don't, you know, don't do this if you're dealing with forests. That's kind of the general rule of, of thumb, right? Blue, I mean, technically, it's kind of soft and nice, but that makes you think water uh, in some way. So try to think of what's a, a, um, uh, a proper way to go about this. All right, that's, that's our goal. Okay, so that's that. Another thing, let's see, bear with me here. Yes, left click on where it says more. Get in here, format, no, damn. All right, hold on, let me hit back. Where is it? I haven't, is that it? No, that's the same thing. Hold on, all right. If I go up here, no. So if I go here, I can edit label? No, that's not what I want. Okay. Now, ugh, it's not that. It's not that. I want to fix this. And I, oh, and it used to be a case where I could just do it. Oh, maybe it's over here. One of these things. Slug in a ditch. Yes, this is it. Okay. All right, class. I got an old man working with new program. So what I did to make sure it's clear, um, and I'm not, I'm not professional enough to stop this and edit it and make it look like I know what's going on. No, this is this is GIS. This is this is what you do. They update software, or in this case, I go from the desktop version to the pro version. I the thing that I've done a million times, it's not in the same way that I once did it. Right? That's what happens. But we persevere. So we're here to start with. Come over here, this advanced symbology options. I didn't realize I was doing so advanced. Um, but a few things we want to do. Decimal places. Don't ever want to use six decimal places. That's absurd. None of this was, was uh, that precise ever. I mean, we could leave one or two maybe. We're definitely not doing six. So that's silly. Uh, that's fine. This thousand separators, if I check that, 
you can see in the contents pane it's adjusting stuff, but it puts in those commas, which makes it so much easier to um, to get. So that's what you want to do. Just those those two things um, in here, right? This idea of uh, um, one decimal place. Okay, I think that's healthy um, right here, uh, and then the thousand separators to make this look less robotic and rough to make it easier to read. Okay, um, so I got that. Now, what I'm gonna do, actually what I'm gonna do is hit save. Yeah, here's what I want you to do. I'm gonna stop right now, because we've gotten into, okay, I won't fully stop, all right, hold on. Um, you know, the, the insert um, yeah, layout, do a new layout, you're gonna actually make the map and all that right. I want you to, uh, you, know, you know, have it nice, work with the colors, get this stuff, and, and uh, you know, you can change your no data to something that looks like gray. Just a nice solid gray is a standard one. But make this look good, all right? Some quality thing. You're going to have the layout, and I want you to do, do that rectangle trick that I showed you before. You know, it was the South America map where I first did that. Draw the rectangle. You can have your title, something like Global Forest. Um, Put in uh, a legend, right, so that we have this, so the person looking at the map can see what's going on and know what these values actually mean, right? So you're going to do that. But here's the deal. Before you are done with this, what I want from you is to go in and change the coordinate system slash projection. I have a separate video of just me kind of playing around with this stuff, um, you know, and, and a little more on the, the concept. But the general idea is I'm going to go in here, properties, coordinate systems, and as I got, you know, into in the other video, I'm going to find something, let's see what we're thinking, there we go, that would work, right? What I want you to do is I want you to think about what would be the best option here, right? What, what kind should I use? Do I need conformality, equivalence? Is it more of a compromise thing? Some of the stuff you've read about in Canvas, some of it I talk about a little bit with that other video, but it's up to you. I want you to think about this. There's no one right answer as you're selecting stuff from here. Some of these will work, some of these won't work, but it's up to you to figure that out. But find something that you think would be good, whatever it might be, right? I'll just, let's, let's just do this one right here. I'm going to hit that one, hit OK. And so that we've got our chain. Oh, oh, OK, interesting. So here's, here's something. There's no, I didn't put the neat line value in here for the data. So what I'll do, I'll do this separately. Yeah, that'll work. And well, no, I'll update, I'll update the file view database. There's this neat line feature class that I made that basically it goes around the edge of the earth here. So we don't have this weird hanging emptiness out there. So what I'll do, and I'll make sure I'll try to put a note in the thing. Damn, I was so close. Um, but yeah, so I'll put an extra one that's called neat line. Put a little, little note in the description, like right before the video or whatever to explain it. Um, but you bring that in and that'll kind of make a nice background. So it doesn't look like the earth is just kind of spilling out into nothingness, which can happen when we do these projections. Okay, so we'll, we'll fix that. But here's the deal. So I, I picked this one. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. I'm not going to give anything away here, but I want you to pick something, all right? And then in your rectangle, where you have the, you know, title, legend, um, here, like North Arrow, think about this. Every line of longitude heads north, right? Like here's the prime meridian right here. This is the North Pole at the top, right? Same thing as we move over to the side. They'll go to the North Pole, but think about this. All right, if I have a north arrow somewhere on there, it's going to be pointing 
it's straight up, most likely, right? That's not always true. It's true if I'm here in the center of the map, but if I'm here in, you know, Southern California, north is not straight up, it's over to the side this way. So a map like this, I wouldn't want a north arrow. Okay? And, and I, I don't know if I mentioned that in previous ones, but honestly, if you've got longitude lines, don't worry about north. You don't need it. It's, uh, and it's only going to get you into trouble. Okay, so don't put a north arrow. Unless, oh, oh. Unless, I mean, if all of the lines, the longitude lines, point in the same direction, then I guess that would work, right? But just to be safe, it's kind of best not to do it in general. But, you know, you do whatever. I'm not here to tell you how to do your job. But what I want, so in that little rectangle, there you put all these different elements, and then somewhere in there, I want you to insert a text box and say which projection slash coordinate system you use, right? And to get that, just, you know, copy whatever is actually here, right? You can use, you don't need this parentheses world. Don't put that. Um, that's lame, but they throw all that in there, but just the actual name itself of any of these, okay? So you can just have like a little text box that says, you know, projection, or, yeah, use projection. Don't use coordinate system. It's a case where they like coordinate system, but say projection, you know, and then like colon, two dots, and then whatever. Two point equidistant, all right? Tobler cylindrical one, whatever it might be. Okay, so you write that in there. And then you're gonna export this as a PDF, okay? Bring it into Canvas, you know, start the assignment, upload file, you're gonna do that. But in the comments box, I want you to type why you chose this specific one, whichever one that might be. So tell me like, I, you know, I chose stereographic because this projection is good for whatever, all right? And I thought with forest data, I wanted to preserve this major property this minor property, whatever it might be, okay? So it's gonna take a little thinking on your part. And like I said, there's no one right answer. But what you need to do is convince me, yes, this was the proper choice. And, you know, and I'll let you know, there's no one right answer, but there are plenty of wrong answers. There are things you could do that would be, would be a bad choice for the data and the map in question. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that, all right? So read through this stuff, think about it, Google some of these names and play around with them, see what they look like. But but that's the idea. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, reach out to me. Work with each other too. I know some of you are, are doing that, you know, form little little virtual study groups or, or whatever. Talk to one another, whether it's through discussion things in Canvas. I think you can do that, or if you, you might already know people in the class or whatever it might be, but also feel free reach out to me, I'll guide you as best I can. Okay, hopefully it's all clear. You know, you, you got this. It's gonna be a piece of cake. You guys are already seeing what you're doing already. It's looking good. You're gonna be good. All right, all right, best of luck, geographers.